I can predict the direction of the real estate market. No, I can't. Nobody can do that. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about what predicting is. Welcome. I had a comment on the channel the other day that said, oh, now that interest rates have gone up, you guys are quiet. Well, when interest rates went up, I didn't have a good internet connection. <laughs> so I've been on in a few days, folks. So I'm not being quiet because rates have gone on. And I want to remind people, go back and look at my videos. I haven't been predicting where rates are going to go. I've had people come on like Barry Habib that tell us where he thinks rates are going to go. And he also said there's a lot of things that can change that and a lot of things that can get in the way. And at this point, he hasn't been correct. Rates went up. They did not go down. That's one person. There's a lot of people out there predicting where this market is. And I want to kind of dive into where we are in Arizona with absolutely zero intention of trying to convince you it's a time to buy or a time to sell. We're going to look at the actual numbers versus some of the things that people are predicting. So those of you that have missed my videos, thank you for making a comment and uh, noticing that I haven't been around. <laughs> I'm heading back home uh, the day after Labor Day. So I'm up here in the Northwest still, as you can see behind me and see those big, beautiful trees. That's why Starlink doesn't work. They don't like trees. So what's going on in our market? I want to start with not a prediction, but where we're at now. And that is our seven day moving average. How many homes are on the market? How many are coming on the market and how many are actually going under contract and i track this every day and take a look at that see that black line on the bottom that's homes that have gone under contract it hasn't changed since may it's stuck in this zone now this blue line on the top is number of new listings so i'm going to talk about both of these separately first of all let's talk about this low number here which today is like 26,400 over the past seven days Guess what the lowest number of homes under contract we've had in our market? 2,700. That's the lowest on a seven-day moving average. So now when you look at that number, you have to ask yourself, when people are saying that sales are going to plummet, that they're going to dip, and sales are going to get really bad, newsflash, we're already there. So if you're waiting for sales to get at an absolute record low, there's a bell going off right now. We're there. How much lower can we get? besides 2700 we're bouncing off of a ceiling or a floor of 2600 it's like a dead fish 2600 looks to me like that's the floor because believe it or not there are still people out there in a good position to buy let's talk about baby boomers all right oh when there's a recession everybody's going to lose their job baby boomers hold the largest amount of real estate in the country majority of which are retired what job are they going to lose their retirement they're not going to be unemployed. They're already unemployed. They're not going to be forced to sell. They're sitting on a very low interest rate. They're staying put, my friends. But those that aren't staying put have equity and they're buying other homes. So they're still driving the market. Yes, we're down 44 to 47%, but baby boomers are still purchasing and they're still selling. Not as many. That's why you don't see this new listing number creeping up. I know people get tired of hearing about supply and demand, but that's what drives the market. Right now, 80% of new listings coming on are still going under contract, even though we are at record lows. That's a true number. Now, let's talk about some of the predictions I see. This is what I'm quoting when I'm saying extremes. So if you look at sales per month, seven day average, here it is, 2,732, right there in the middle, if I could circle that. See that? That's the lowest we've ever been. Typical is 7,165. The highest we've ever had, this is in 2019, pre-pandemic, 10,540. So this tells you where we're at today. Are we at the top when it comes to number of homes going under contract or are we on the bottom? We're below the bottom. We're about as bad as it gets. It's dead out there. And so for real estate professionals and for people that are in the lending business, they're having a tough year. Pat and I like to uh, make the comment that says when things are going really good, the Christmas party is at stake 44. When things are bad, it's a cheese platter in the break room. And that's the kind of year that everybody's going to have this year. But when you look at that number, you say, OK, how much lower can that get? Let me predict that for you. It just can't get down to 1500 there's always people out there buying now could we have a banking crisis yes when we did 
when we did have a banking crisis, when things froze up, sales dipped to 2,700 every seven days. So we already know what that looks like. The other thing I'm looking at here is the contract ratio. The contract ratio still isn't down to a balanced market here on the right-hand side. So homes going under contract are still going along at a pretty good clip. But then you go, well, we're going to get all this new construction that's coming. And there are people saying that there's so much new construction that we have a glut of inventory. Here's a national number right here, folks. Months completed. The blue line is months under construction. And the gray line is months not yet started. Months under construction, months of supply, and you all know what that number is, is still just slightly above four right here. That's not a glut. We did get up to about seven right here in January of 2023, but that's when the wheels kind of fell off the wagon when the rates went up. So remember, when rates spiked up from three and a half to seven, it was a shock to our market. So the I buyers started dumping their homes right away. The mom and pop investors were panicking and putting their homes on the market. Those are all gone now. The I buyers are pretty much, they're still out there, but they're not the big players that they were. They used to be 6% of our market. That part's all gone. What happened to the old saying that said that if rates go up by 1%, prices come down by 10%. Remember that? A lot of real estate agents were saying that. If rates go up by 1%, prices go down by 10. They've gone up more than 1%. Prices have not gone down by 10. In fact, we're finishing this year above last year. Now, let's talk about mortgage rates and predicting them. Uh, the chairman came out yesterday after their... Uh, Fed meeting that they're having up in Jackson Hole and said, you know, we're going to keep raising probably a couple more. That's going to put you up above eight. That's what it looks like. Now, the bond market has got a 50% chance that they're going to do that. They've priced that in. At the last rate hike, they had a 93% probability that they were going to go up a quarter of a point. And they did, so the market didn't move much. But then we had a lot of wind blowing with problems in China, problems with some banks, some interesting stuff going on in the Bank of Japan that made the bond market react and rates took on a big move. Like Barry said, sometimes there's things that happen out there that you don't see coming. And so am I going to predict interest rates? I don't like marry the house, date the rate. I got a video out there that tells you why I don't like it. I think that's foolhardy advice because you're guessing. You're making an assumption. You're saying, well, I can get in here now and I can refinance later. Well, what if you can't? So if you're counting on a lower rate later, the probability is that could happen. You know, rates always go down during a recession, but now everybody's debating, are we going to have a recession? What kind of recession is it going to be? Is it going to be major? And if it's major, are we going to have a lot of job losses? And is that going to force people to put their homes on the market? That remains to be seen. Baby boomers aren't going to do it. There's three buckets of buyers out there right now. One is first time home buyer that quite frankly is priced out of the market. They've given up, they're sitting on their hands. Keep your powder dry, your day may be coming. Pay down your debt, get rid of your credit cards, get rid of that high car payment and get ready to make a move when you see fit. Make sure that your house payment is not more than 30% of your income. Some people are jumping in now at 50% of their income. Probably not a good move. Some people are getting in with a high interest rate with the hope that they can refinance next year or the year after. That's a probability. It's not an accurate prediction. There's a chance that you'll be able to do that, but don't bank on a chance. Now, if you're a speculator, then why not? That may play out for you very well. I'm also seeing predictions that, like Barbara Corcoran says, real estate's going to go up 15% next year. That's a prediction. She may be right. She may be wrong. So we have to look at all these numbers. And when you see these headlines that you see what's going on, and particularly when you see how many new listings are coming on, cross-check it with other facts because that article I just showed you, it's not even close to being true. We're not seeing 11,000 homes come on the market on a seven-day or on a weekly basis. Was that weekly or monthly? That's a weekly basis. Not happening. If you're trying to make the decision whether or not to buy or sell right now, there's a lot of conflicting data. The data that says that we're going to go up by 15% next year in value, as per Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. Um, there is uh, data out there saying that we're going to have this huge rush in inventory if we have a hard, hard recession and people list their homes. Not really buying into that. 
I think if there's a problem with banking and we do end up with a credit freeze, then who knows what can happen. But I'm looking back and going, the last time we had a credit freeze when Lehman Brothers collapsed, we dipped all the way down to the sales number that we're already at today. So how much worse can it get sales? I don't think so. I don't think sales are going to go down. I think inventory will come up. But I don't know what the catalyst will be for inventory to come up. I'm waiting for that. I'm tracking the numbers. I'm looking. I don't see it. I think we're going to be stuck here for a while. That's just my personal opinion. And yes, it's a prediction that we'll be stuck here for a while. But that prediction could be way off, just like everything else I've read to you. Do me a favor and share this video with your friends and punch that like button. Take care. Have a great day.